At the Toronto Veterinary Emergency Hospital, Jonathan and Melissa Hurst have to make some crucial decisions about Dexter, their 12-year-old golden retriever. The first thing I would recommend is we ultrasound his heart. We're looking for that evidence of a mass to kind of confirm our suspicion. Mm -hmm. That can be done today. If it is positive, then without question, this is unfortunately due to cancer. Mm -hmm. So if the ultrasound is negative today, but we're still suspicious there's a tumor, there's a blood test we can send off. It takes about a one-week turnaround time. It is fairly sensitive, meaning if it is positive, it probably means he has a tumor. And then last option um, would be either now, now that you've had more time to collect your thoughts, or if he continues to reaccumulate, would be to say, based on the odds that this is cancer, and he's going to need continued therapy and monitoring and treatment, we want to stop. We don't want to put him through anymore. Mm -hmm. There is no right or wrong decision in this scenario, right? I mean, these are all quite different approaches, one doing more tests and possibly treatment, one doing what we've done, and one stopping. Um, it's what you're most, you know, comfortable with. Yeah. Okay. If you want to run an ultrasound today, yeah. that's fine. I feel the best I can do for this family is to give them a diagnosis. So at least there's no more unknowns. So that they can be prepared for what's going to happen and make decisions. At the Animal Medical Center in Manhattan, a surgical team is about to push the boundaries of pet health care to new heights. Hoku, a 16-year-old male cat, is part of a study researching the effect of stem cells in slowing down the progress of kidney failure. He will be the first cat to undergo this treatment using stem cells from a donor cat. The $6,000 cost of the procedure is covered by research funds, but if they had to, Hoku's owners would happily pay. Had that not been available, yeah, we would have just done the same procedure and paid for it. Yeah. Absolutely, no question. It's several years of quality of life, and it's a lot less expensive than some of the other options, like a transplant where you're harvesting a kidney from another cat, so you're affecting two lives, and you're responsible for two lives. So it's not just the cost of the surgery. Um, but we would do anything for our pets, we really would. The vets carrying out today's procedure, Chick Weiss and Alison Barent, both studied human medicine. They also happen to be married to each other. With their combined skills, they make the perfect team. He's a boarded surgeon, I'm a boarded internist, I do mostly interventional endoscopy, he does mostly interventional radiology, and together we're both overlap trained in each other's specialties. We're going to start with the four French catheter right here. This tiny little catheter is what's going to go into the renal artery. And by tiny, she means the thickness of two or three cats' whiskers, give or take. The stem cells Hoku will receive today can be delivered in two ways. The simple, quick method is to inject through a vein. The problem is there's no control over where they will go. The stem cells spread throughout the body to all the major organs, but only a fraction reach the desired target, the kidneys. Doctors Berent and Weiss prefer a more focused approach. That's why they're using a catheter. They'll need a full surgical team for this operation. By inserting a catheter, the entire dose can be guided through the body and pushed directly to the kidneys, exactly where they are needed. Here. Fluoroscopy gives the team a live view inside the patient. This helps them guide the catheter directly to the kidneys. It's coming down the carotid artery into the brachycephalic trunk, and this is going towards the heart. So we actually want to aim the wire over this way. One of their biggest challenges is finding instruments small enough for animals. So our goal, taking from the human side, is to see what do they do in a little baby with this? What are they doing in kids? What are they doing in adults? What are they doing with non-resectable cancers? Because they're not euthanizing these people. They're treating them. They're treating them with devices, with stents, with tubes. They're creating things in a very innovative, novel, pioneer way. Why can't we do that on the veterinary side as well? So what we do is we see what they're doing in humans and little kids, and we can modify that and work with, you know, different companies to be basically make the proper device for a dog or a cat. There's a lot of problems in converting these, this technology to animal patients. One is the cost. Some of these devices are very, very expensive. In human patients, they do a lot of this under conscious sedation, so a light 
level of sedation, whereas in animals, they have to be under general anesthesia. They won't just sit and wait for you to do a procedure on them. They'll get up and move around. So uh, we have to put them under general anesthesia. That adds a cost, uh, a potential risk. I'm just going to get a little bubble here of saline. Now I'm going to put the stem cells right on so we have no air. We're starting, so note if there's any reaction. Bang on target. The stem cells have reached the renal artery. Over time, doctors will know if the stem cells have stabilized Hoku's kidney disease. If you're bewildered by how much time, money, and effort have gone into Hoku's health, you're not alone. Ken Gallinger would agree with you. He writes an ethics column for the Toronto Star. Uh, a young woman wrote in. She had a dog. The dog had swallowed a ball. Second time, uh, she'd already spent $6,000 to have the first ball removed from the dog's stomach. And so the question was, you know, do I have to spend another 6000 And she said, you know, I had to borrow the money the first time. I still have student loans. Uh, ethically, what do I do? Do I have to do this, or is it okay if I put the dog down? It seemed to be obvious. Uh, spending $6,000 once is, is bordering on ridiculous. Spending $6,000 twice is just way over the border, as far as I'm concerned. Here's someone who has gone even further. Ex-U.S. Marine, Aiden Pfeffer, is prepared to spend tens of thousands to treat his dog's cancer. Rex is an eight-year-old Belgian Malinois who has served tours of duty in Afghanistan as an explosive detection dog and is credited with saving countless American lives. In 2009, the vehicle in which he was traveling struck an IED. He was not physically injured, but he did receive a lot of post-traumatic stress type issues. His handler was killed. He's consistently making sure that where I am and that my wife and I are safe. He's a member of the family. He's uh, definitely what we call our, our practice child. Like many pet owners, Aiden can't afford to pay for his pet's treatment. In his case, $45,000. He's already spent 10000 of his own. To pay Rex's medical bills, he's turned to online crowdsourcing. So far, Rex's heroic backstory has struck a chord, and Aiden is well on his way to covering Rex's medical bills. We've been very blessed and, and all the, the, the support from friends, family, and people that we don't even know. There's some people that say we're absolutely crazy, it's a dog. And then there's other people like us that's, that uh, say, hey, we wouldn't, we wouldn't want anything else. You're doing the right thing. Doctors, I gotta give you a we struggle with that, too. We, are, are, we, are we doing the right thing for Rex? Right, Rex. I'm going to listen to your heart. Okay. Good boy, Rex. Good boy. Good boy. Right. No. Okay. You're safe. You're safe. Yeah. Good boy. I got him. Yep. Good boy. Good boy, Rex. Yeah. We don't want to be putting him through more than he needs to go through. He's gone through enough in his life already. Yeah, it's costly, but he is a member of the family, and he is someone that has done so much for our country. So we, we feel that we owe it to him to give him the, the long and healthy retirement that he deserves. Good boy, Ginger. Good boy. Good boy with Sarah. That's a boy. Good boy, Ginger. The trouble on the pet thing is that more and more people are starting to think of pets as almost people. They want to use the same criteria for their pet that they would use for their grandmother. And I think that's quite absurd. That, I think, is more the issue than the particulars of how, how many dollars is it reasonable to spend. People always want you to say, well, okay, so what do you think is reasonable? Is a thousand bucks reasonable or two? That's not the issue. The issue for me is remembering that we're talking about an animal here. We're not talking about a person. We're not talking about a family member. We're talking a much loved animal, but an animal. Like most emergency veterinary hospitals, the Massachusetts Veterinary Referral Hospital offers